<laughs> Actually, I love... I'm not sure I love coffee as much as I used to. It used to be in the old days, I'd drink lots of coffee. Now I've been every... It seems like three or four years drinking less and less. Do you get distracted? I do. <laughs> There's so many distractions in the world. There's so many attractions that we could go and play in because we have liberty to do what we want to and we have grace that applies to us to go wherever we choose to that we feel as though because of liberty and because of grace because we have quote unquote freedom that we can participate in the world and its ways by being absorbed in things that attract us but don't you think that at times they distract us from the reality of what we should be doing or what we could be doing or who we could be knowing because you see when Jesus came he said something interesting that I personally have made applicable to my life even though I didn't live it always as much as I do now and as I have in the past and at different times of my life but he said that we speak what we know of and we come from heaven but if we were to speak of the things and we speak of earthly things but if we were to speak of things of there you wouldn't be able to receive it because you can't even receive what we speak of the earthly things now so there's always in just knowing god so much more that we haven't yet had a chance or opportunity to have god show us or reveal to us so don't think that the book is closed i mean you know, as far as Revelation, we like to say prophecy is closed and, you know, we have the Bible and the Bible is complete. You don't need to add another book to it, but that's a whole different story. But the point is, is that Jesus wanted to reveal the Father and he said that we could know the Father and he wanted to reveal himself. And he said we could see him and know him and hear him and our sheep hear his voice and they know him. So if you're content where you're at, man, you haven't even begun to know what Jesus is. Or who he is because there's so much more happening in heaven we need to go there we need to check it out we need to discover that there's more to reality than the distractions of the world because it's easily to get distracted by oh football season coming or the political agenda that's coming or all these things that we think we need to be a part of but are they something we need to be a part of or are they making us a part of something else that might be leading somewhere else that might not be the most pure or profitable or beneficial thing for us because I know there are lots of reasons of you know and people do this but you know they could probably quote statistics baseball football sports and they have it just like that and they can tell you all about the past present and future history of sports events but can I ask you a question do you know your scriptures do you know the Bible? Are you aware of Jesus? Has the Father made himself so real to you that you know the Father and the Son? Because I know you know your sports, and I know you can probably quote that all the way back. But do you know God's plan of salvation from Genesis to Revelation and able to just speak it right now? I know one night I listened to a pastor, I think it was Chuck, do that. And then, I don't know, I was doing something one time, sharing or teaching or something, and I did the same thing. I went... Wow, that was cool. <laughs> I wish I had recorded it. I wanted to see it. Because, you see, there's more to life than just the world. We have eternity coming. There's more to life than the distractions. There is a big attraction coming, and his name is Jesus. And to know him in a more personal, intimate way will help you to come to a place of going beyond that that he will show you and reveal to you the Father. And as he does, he's going to bless you with even more as he wants to show you what he's created and all that he's done in the universe. So let's pursue on to know God in an intimate, personal way rather than to know the world and its ways. Because it's too easy to get distracted in a world of attractions. And we would rather not make ourselves the main attraction but look for that which is to come. Because it's getting exciting. We've heard all the flyers and all the news is coming. The main attraction is almost here. Are you ready for it? In my utmost for his highest, come unto me, self-consciousness. Matthew 11:28. God means us to live a fully 
orbed, complete life in Christ Jesus. But there are times when that life is attacked from the outside, and we tumble into a way of introspection, which we thought had gone, something we thought we had conquered. Self-consciousness is the first thing that will upset the completeness of the life in God, and self-consciousness continually produces wrestling. If you're aware of yourself, you're wrestling with yourself, and you're wearing down that which God has put in you. For God does say that the flesh warreth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Self-consciousness is not sin. It may be produced by a nervous temperament or by a sudden dumping down into new circumstances. It is never God's will that we should be anything less than absolutely complete in Him. Anything that disturbs us and it disturbs our rest in Him must be cured at once, and it is not cured by being ignored, but by coming to Jesus. If we come to Him and ask Him to produce Christ consciousness, He will always do it until we learn to abide in Him. In other words, before you go anywhere else to do anything else, if anything is upsetting you or anything is challenging to you or you have blown it or in some way failed in some circumstance and you are self-conscious about it, go to Jesus. Talk to him. He's here. He's inside you. A. B. He's all about you. That's God's presence because God works in creation and he's able to reveal it throughout his determination of how he will choose some operation of the circumstance to connect with creation so that he can reveal to you that God created it and that he will work it to you through the circumstance of your life. C, he can move by his Holy Spirit to speak inside you by his still small voice so that you can hear him and that you're in communication with him so you're interactive with God in that way. D, he said that you could hear his voice and that audibly God could speak to you in a clear, you know, sounding voice. It won't be thunder and lightning, but after the thunder and lightning, you'll hear him. But E, God could even appear in his presence because God has appeared at different times throughout history and he still does too to this day that he could actually appear to you in a simple way. So don't despise that which God might be saying to you when he says, go to him if you're feeling like something is wrong and you need to start again. Because all through the day, he wants to walk with you in your way to reveal to you his way to take care of you today. Pretty simple in my way. <laughs> Oh well. Never allow the dividing up of your life in Jesus to remain without facing it. Beware of leakage, of distractions, of attractions of the world, of dividing up your life by the influence of friends or of circumstances that will take away the time that you're spending with whatever it is that God has led for you to do today. Beware of anything that is going to split up your oneness with him and make you see yourself separately. No, you are in him and he is in you and you and him and him and you even as the Father was in him and the Father was and he was in the Father. So too Jesus has prayed for us that we walk with him and walk in the Spirit as he is in the Spirit and we walk one with him, in him. Simple. Nothing is so important as to keep that right spiritually. The great solution is the simple one. Come unto me. <laughs> Amen. The depth of your, the depth of our reality, the depth of our reality, intellectually, morally, and spiritually, is tested by these words. How real is your God? In other words, if you're always going about what the Bible says, the Bible says this, and the Bible says that, and the Bible is this, and the Bible is that, then maybe God is your Bible. You know, and you made the Bible your God, and the Jews did that at one time with Torah, and they said, well, the Torah says, and the Torah is this, and the Torah is that, and they kiss it, you know, and then they open it, and they read it, and they strap it on the head, and they strap it on the wrist, and they strap it in everywhere, and they apply it, and they think it, and they do it, and they interpret it, and then they build a hedge around it, and they build a wall so to protect it, so that it keeps it comfortable, you know, so you can at least accomplish something close to the similar similitude of knowing God in some personal way that the law of God said that you should know him in an intimate way. Oh, well, they blew it. <laughs> So too, you could, maybe, just maybe, you haven't treated God as being real in your day, as he wants to be today. How real is your God? In every degree in which we are not real, we will dispute rather than come unto Jesus. If you want to know Jesus, and you want to know if he's real, you got to go to him and prove it to yourself. 
Because if you don't know, today is the day for you to find out. I know in all detail of my life, every single little nuance, I get blessed out of my mind seeing how intimate God can be and how real. Because he's given me little things that <laughs> only he and I know that I, I just got a kick out of. Like my hummingbird that comes or my plants or just all kinds of neat little things. And he's also there in the big ones too. He cares for you. Do you care for him? Then make him real.